In our last episode, we tried to remain positive and warm while our engine was in pieces. We did lots of beautiful walks in the Bay of Islands, but our friends had all left on good weather windows for the big passage north. This left us having to do this long passage on our own without any buddy boats after sorting out any last minute problems and repairs. But we do eventually leave and that is what this episode is all about. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be. You and me, we're family. Okay, so um, we're leaving New Zealand. We checked out of customs, we've paid our marina fee. In typical mothership fashion, we're never fully ready, but uh, we're as ready as we're going to be. And, uh, if we're going to make it Fiji, then uh, we have to <laughs> fight the bullet and go. We've got issues, as usual, like the Iridium Go is not downloading forecast, but we went and bought a last minute you know, shopping spree and got a Starlink. Uh, so we're hoping that's going to work. We also need to get some kind of tarpaulin rigged up to protect us against the leaks in our canopy. So I went to see Roger from North Sales, who had done a fantastic seminar on how to repair your sails at sea and what to have in your sail repair kit. Roger from North Sales, and I'm in charge of uh, making sure all the cruisers have got all their sail repair kits ready to go offshore. So the number of really mandatory things you need to do before we go offshore is preparation. Check all your sails here before you put them back on the boat and uh, get your sail repair kit ready. So in the event that you uh, have to do a sail repair, you've got the equipment and the knowledge to do it. He's going to help me fix something on our bimini that needs repairing. So uh, that's where I'm off to today. He's a great guy. I highly recommend if you need something done when you arrive in New Zealand, get it done with him. It's like a good weather window and um, the only thing now is to worry about is the engine because of all the new repairs but we're going to sail as much as we can obviously. Um, so yeah, boys doing their last bit of exercise because it's going to be like a small space of about four metres squared for the next um, ten days. So uh, yeah, you've got to enjoy what you, the land and the movement while you can. Off we go! So, here we go. Bye bye New Zealand. It's been a an experience. That's been it's been a total pleasure, but it's not New Zealand's fault. It's more kind of the boat's fault. But uh, anyway, glad to be getting out there. And glad to be carrying on. Well, we're on uh, passage again, and now full regalia, thermals, boots, jackets. Uh, but look at it, the uh, the charts. Um, this will be the coldest day every day. It'll get a bit warmer. The closer the closer we get to the equator the one we're going to get and so layer by layer we should uh, end up in just our shorts at the end of it. So this is the first uh, night passage we've had for a while um, and uh, the first since New Zealand. And, uh, we've got off from quite a good start, we've got uh, about 16 knots of wind, uh, we've got uh, a reef in the, the main and the Genoa so we're doing about five knots. Um, just going through a bit of a squally area at the moment um, and we've also got a the cargo ship is passing our bows and we're on the starboard side. But so far so good. Uh, we've lost the alternator so we're not charging the battery and the, the prop gen alternator is gone and the engine alternator is gone. So we're kind of relying on solar which uh, means obviously we're not producing any power at night. But apart from that everything seems to be okay. My uh, watch stops in about a half an hour and Darius coming up to do an hour and a half and Renka three hours and then you and it. 5.30 and then meet back on at 7. So I've come on uh, watch the second time, my 7 o'clock watch, and uh, I've been greeted by a, by a lovely sunrise, but even better, there's a wandering albatross flying around the boat. The first one I've ever seen. It's beautiful, it's huge. Okay, this is the um, second day. We left on Friday, this is Saturday, and um, so we've done the first night watch. I never really managed to sleep on the first day. Um, we have the watch system where uh, Woody stays up till one, so then Darry comes on one till 2.30. I do 2.30 until 
5.30 or 6 and then Ewan comes on for an hour and then Woody comes on again. I'm supposed to sleep before and after but I never really managed to sleep before and I didn't even manage to sleep after this time. So it's really annoying and that also makes it difficult to eat because you don't sleep, you can't eat and you just kind of... Oh horrible so food wise I made a smoothie this morning we all managed to keep down and um, Willie's made some tomato soup which we're all managing to slurp soup I want the weather to come down so I can do some fishing uh, just to let you know this is only me and the boys that are kind of struggle with all this Woody just carries on you know eating I'm sure he sleeps well as well because I always hear him snoring away and just wish I could <laughs> okay wind wise I'm on a beam reach and um, sort of just generally between sort of 10 and 15 knots gusts up a little bit more sometimes so we've got the Genoa out and we've got two reefs in the main and we've got the mizzen out but there's a lot of squalls around so we kind of want to be ready in case we have to reduce sails quickly but we seem to be somehow it always seem to be just dodging them I don't know how This is uh, day three, or probably our second full day anyway, and um, it's the second night watch we've done now. And, uh, we're well out into the ocean now, which is great. Uh, Renka still hasn't found a sea legs, so she's a bit grouchy, but uh, luckily the boys have stepped up to the mark and they're doing their watches fine. Uh, we're all getting into our routine, got our snacks and our audiobooks, and um, we've been, in the last few days we've been followed by a, an albatross, which has been amazing, um, just watching it sort of circle about. Um, beautiful sort of very distinctive wingspan and uh, I, I think the whole time I was watching it for hours on end I only saw it flap its wings once and that was to get out of the way of a skewer that kind of died bombed in front of it but um, yeah this is perfect sail actually I mean we were a bit worried because it wasn't a recognized weather window by the uh, expert weather routers but uh, we had some friends who went ahead of us who got hit by quite a nasty uh, front people who were behind us which who were probably going to be hit by another following low we seem to have hit the sweet spot right in the middle. Um, hasn't been exactly as predicted, but it's actually been better than predicted because it was predicted there's no wind in the middle and actually getting about 15 knots, which is absolutely perfect for a calm sail. Maybe a, a metre, metre and a half of swell. No, you want to break your fall, but are you feeling anything at all? Everybody feels alone. Uh, kind of every now and then I'll try and steer just to give the autopilot a bit of a break um, to maybe cool it off a bit because it's a mechanical part that's working non-stop. Also it gets a bit sketchy sometimes with these clouds we're kind of getting um it gets a bit squally and then sometimes the wind dies and it picks up so the autopilot can't quite work it out so that's another reason uh, to steer and um, of course it just keeps you awake because I'm so tired that um a bit of fresh air and um, a bit steering just kind of wakes me up a little bit. But you're bleeding from the inside out and you'll never say what This is officially moving back into the tropical zone. So tomorrow I might even take the boots off. Boots off. These are the Dubarry boots that everybody in England wears these. Like Cortex lines, leather. Everybody's on their own. I wanna see the stars collide. I wanna see the burning sky inside you tonight. Go blind. It hasn't been that much wind yet, and because it's staying around two to two point four knots, and so we've got the engine on. I mean, there's like no boats I've seen. It's 
barely any ra waves and nothing's really happening it's kind of nice boring at the same time we do keep on getting squid in our boat there's one over there on the deck and yeah that's what's going on <laughs> So we've got two problems at the moment, energy-wise. Um, the 24 volt alternator isn't working on the engine. Um, I, th I suspect it's just a loose wire when they, uh, when we had the uh, engine mounts done. And I think it's probably pulled one of the wires loose. Um, but I think there's so many wires down there and the, and the boat's rolling about that uh, I can't really find it. So uh, I'm gonna have to wait till we're uh, somewhere a bit calmer to sort of take all the uh, wires out one by one and inspect them. So we haven't got any energy coming from the alternator and also because we're heading north um, the solar panels are shadowed by the by the sails um, and even though we've only got the main sail out at the moment to to kind of steady us it's enough to shadow the um, solar panels. So uh, we're a bit uh, energy deficient at the moment we're using more than we're producing. If we were sailing I could use the prop gen but there's no wind either. So at some point, I think I'm going to have to turn the engine off and put the generator on and just charge those batteries up. Uh, we're quite far in the southern latitudes. The, the sun doesn't really rise that high. Um, and so even by midday, we're still not getting a whole lot of solar. And all in all, our, our batteries are kind of depleting slowly with no way of uh, replenishing them. Right, so we've been running the engine for um, quite a while now, um, since last night, but there is no wind and we need to get north because there's a big low coming through, well from both sides actually, and we don't want to get stuck there. If you like following our story, please hit the super thanks and help towards the creation of these videos. And if you'd like to have more access, we would love it if you join our patron family where you get ad-free videos, cockpit sessions, downloads, guides, and you can message us directly. We wanted to just check to see whether um, there was enough oil. We wanted to turn the engine off and cool it down, but we can't turn the engine off because the, um, the tachometer, I think it's called, just doesn't, it's not working. It needs to be replaced. So we, now we're at the point where we don't really want to turn it off in case we can't turn it back on again. Usual thing. <laughs> so, um, we're just going to leave it on and Woody's really try to check the oil like that, really. But yeah, it's just one of those situations again. I think when we know we don't need the engine anymore, we'll turn it off. Okay, so um, we've got this problem where the wake speed was not charging the house batteries um, and then the engine wouldn't turn off. But we, I think the reason why the engine wouldn't turn off is because the battery was flat, which is why the generator wouldn't turn on. So we're not sure why the engine battery got flat, whether it's because it's something to do with the ignition switch, or whether it's to do with the alternator, which we're just checking now, or whether it's something else we don't know about. So in the end, we switched over to our backup starter battery, which was able to get the generator working, which then could charge up the first starter battery and also the house batteries. Okay, just to keep you updated, because things are happening so fast. So um, yeah, the problem is solved now with the um, house batteries that were not charging um, basically we didn't have the charger turned on <laughs> so because we turned it off to try and save battery but now the house batteries can be rescued and the, all the stuff in the freezer which I didn't tell you but I thought I was going to throw away hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of food I think one of the things that we had on the boat which Woody put in in New Zealand was a spare engine starter battery because we've had an issue in the past Actually, I'd say twice we've had an issue where it's flattened. Um, and I think that was probably because of the ignition again, which is definitely in need of replacing. But yeah, if we hadn't put that spare battery in, we would have been a bit stuffed today because we couldn't have got the generator going. We would have been relying just on solar and um, prop gen. There's not much movement, so the prop gen really, doesn't really kick in until you go until about six, seven knots. So 
yeah well done Woody for getting that spare engine starter battery in and uh, so we had that we just switched over so I would recommend that to anyone is um, always have a spare engine starter battery unless you've got other means of charging it up okay so an update on today I'm sure this is all been today it's a very long day we managed to charge the batteries with generator and so we've put the sails up so we've got wind enough wind to go sort of four to five knots prop gems on and we did test the engine to make sure the engine turns on again and it did turn on and off so we're learning a lot today we're learning that if the battery goes flat on the engine starter battery we're learning that you can't start or stop the engine if you turn the batteries off while the generator's on that's another thing we did the generator stops quite exhausting learning all these new things so uh, it's time for Woody's afternoon sleep we've all been doing a lot of music today and um, Ewan's on watch now and I'm gonna read and just lie down I think So there's a storm coming, so we're just stormproofing everything. Um, we've closed this, we've closed that. So there's a storm coming and very cold, so I've just got my blanket. And um, so we're stormproofing everything. And it's loads of rain and so, Actually, you can see it's dripping now, so we're getting into the storm. We're kind of deciding what to do. So this uh, front is coming through. The wind suddenly went from 13 knots up to 30. Um, so we've reefed up all the sails, stowed everything away, and um, wait for it to pass. I'm just cuddling up here with my blanket. Um, Gotta be ready, that's the main thing. We should put some buckets outside, Mum. that came through the wind has changed direction but now we're kind of like basically it's on the nose it's coming from the direction of Fiji at the moment it is due to change but this is this reminds me of that trip to Galapagos all over again that kind of that currently our ETA is 11 days on this um, tack but um, yeah we looked at the forecast and it is really supposed to change direction so um, you better do that because I'm not doing this for 10 days. 
Stay tuned to find out in the next episode if we do end up sailing for another 11 days living off canned spaghetti in sauce. Thank you for watching and enjoying these videos. So if you're the type of person that would like to thank us in return, then you can simply click on the super thanks button below, or otherwise you can support us on Patreon and get more than just four videos a month from as little as $3 a month. We look forward to seeing you there.